Well, you know, I, I want to acknowledge that the loss of the Urban Appalachian Council was, was and remains a great loss uh, to the community and particularly, I think, to those, uh, those neighborhoods that we served. And it, it, we can't, I mean, we have lost something of great value and we cannot replace it. And that, um, you know, that, that is a great sorrow that, that I continue to carry and I know that others do too. Um, so I acknowledge I acknowledge that, we acknowledge that, and there may be some individuals who um, who cannot reconnect directly because of that, that sense of loss and, and perhaps betrayal. So why continue? Why continue? Yeah, why, why, what, 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 because it was, UAC was closing, the formal corporation was shutting down, and yet here we are, yeah. uh, several years later, why keep going? Well, the passion around the advocacy, the, the, the cultural celebration, mm -hmm. all those things are, are, are still there, and, and those are things that, you know, we've discovered mm -hmm. that we, we can continue. Right. They, were, yeah. they were never things that were well-funded to begin with, and mm -hmm. you know, we, we can keep it going. Yeah. It's... That this movement still has meaning and would still be useful to people. I know that the advocacy is still needed because um, the, the poverty and the uh, substance abuse and uh, crime and other issues are still there in our, in our low-income communities. And, um, there's still a very practical need for us, but there's a spiritual need for all of us to um, to have a safe space where we can be recognized for who we are. Well, I think um, the name, in a sense, says it, the Urban Appalachian Community Coalition, that it is coalition, co coalitional work. So it's a work of networking, of, of bringing in people within the community who are um, who already are or want to be uh, actively working on Urban Appalachian issues together so that we can, uh, we can do that more effectively. Yeah, I, I would agree. Networking, connecting, um, connecting people to the, the services that, that they need, you know, continuing to, to, to do that. And, and I think we're doing it a little more creatively, you know, using um, social media and, and so on in, in ways that we, we didn't before. Um, a switchboard is, is, is like a magnet. It, it finds the, the, uh, the people who are interested in doing something in low-income neighborhoods, for example, or interested in participating in Appalachian cultural activities. It um, provides a way of, of connecting people. There's a young professor at Miami University who wants to uh, start a student involvement program focusing on urban Appalachian neighborhoods. He came here from, from Appalachia, and um, so he was able to contact us. We were able to point him to, to where that um, neighborhood can focus. We can provide a community base uh, for otherwise what would be kind of an isolated academic program. We're not, this is, this is my probably unique mm -hmm. perspective, we're not burdened by um, the tremendous effort that it took to maintain a social service agency. Mm -hmm. um, that took tremendous um, energy and resources uh, in, in many ways. I feel liberated to focus on um, things that are really important to us. Not that we don't think that those social services are important, but there are ways that we can meet those needs differently. We're not at this point trying to become a direct service agency. So we're developing partnerships with, with organizations that serve our community or ought to serve our community. Santa Maria, for example, is a powerful ally in social services in the West End, and we work closely with them. 
There are people at Children's Hospital who are interested in child health. There are people in other university departments. So we're forming um, partnerships with the health department, with Euler School, with uh, all the universities. Well, what, what's we, happening with UC specifically? Um, one of the specific um, things, over, over the years, different faculty members have organized students and brought them into Appalachian neighborhoods to do research. We got one group working on substance abuse in Lower Price Hill. Dr. Michael Brubaker and his, uh, his department are involved in that. Uh, we've got um, Lori Neighbors working on, uh, they just finished a diabetes study in Price Hill. Um, and uh, we have, we're going to try to organize Appalachian students on campus for mutual support and for service projects. Uh, and we hope to start that at the University of Cincinnati this fall. Exploring the metaphor a little bit that that traditionally uh, in, in you know in traditional communities oftentimes uh, fabric is not in fact whole cloth mm -hmm. fabric is pieced mm -hmm. cloth mm -hmm. uh, in terms of, of quilts and, and other other sort of useful uh, items sewed together to make something else useful and so you know I think of the um, uh, the, the, the the title that I think you contributed to fashioning for um, our you know the uh, Appalachian Studies Association mm -hmm. Conference that we're going to be sponsoring in 2018, restitching the seams, mm -hmm. you know, um, really um, tightening the, the connections between all the different um, patches. Right. Yeah. So, it, so the, the fab, you know, the fabric is the community, and so from that community what happens, you know, what happens is what, what the community makes happen, and that can be, mm -hmm. you know, anything from becoming more uh, visible within the community when there are when there are needs that need to be addressed to becoming more visible within the community when there's celebrations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have n networks within our network and um, Pauletta Hansel for example is a really good arts leader and organizer so she organized those salons and connected different artists with different talents and, and writers writers, poets, and musicians. She knew who those people were and she provided a venue for them and then new people were able to be introduced to our cultural heritage. What are you saying to that audience out there that you're trying to, to stitch in? Mm -hmm. How would you invite them to? Well, I think that one thing is, is we're here. You know, connect, connect in, use us in order to, uh, to promote and create um, activities, services, visibility that's important to the urban Appalachian community. It's um, um, become a part to the degree that you uh, are able to or would like to, um, but also just be aware that we're, we're, we, are, we are a network uh, that can support work that is already happening as well as to help create work that needs to be had. If you, if you're a poet, we can connect you with other poets. If you're a musician, we can connect you with other musicians. If you're a student, we can connect you with information or with, with a neighborhood to work in or study in. Um, if you have a complaint about being mistreated, we can help advocate for that. We can help university professors engage with neighborhoods we can come in and talk to their students. The general tone seems to be well, sure. we're connectors so that you can find more of yourself. Sure, sure. Uh, and yeah, and it's all about, you know, addition. You know, what, 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 what do you bring? Great, you know, join us and, and connect and, and let's find some synergy and, and you know, do those, those things. So um, we, we don't have um, a terribly set agenda. It's, it's all about what individuals bring to the, the table and can add and, uh, and you know, we get excited and, and work together.